with every single barber shop in town closed on account of some stupid global pandemic, my hair is absolutely f beyond recognition. We're gonna be wearing hats for a while here. And before you go crazy in the comments, relax, I'm joking. Stay home, wash your hands, flatten the curve, etc., etc. You've heard it from everybody else. I don't need to tell you that I am crazy about portability. There's something about being able to either do work or play wherever you are with a device they just pulled out of your pocket. Stuff like that has always fascinated me. And as longtime viewers of the channel know, I have a small collection of tiny laptops. I've covered some of them here on the channel, but I haven't really touched on them in a little while. So I wanted to revisit them here today. It's like a bit of a uh, like tiny laptop appreciation video, really. So what are these tiny laptops? What do I use them for? And most importantly, are they worth it? You guys love are they worth it videos, don't you? I, I know you. So let's take a look at some tiny laptops today. Now, I feel like to understand tiny laptops, you have to look at their history. So these things here and right here on my desk right now, I have the GPD Pocket, which I have reviewed here and I hope it's charged. Uh oh, yes, no, okay, it's fine. I, 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 I did this whole video for my main channel in Portuguese and I realized that I didn't charge the laptop once I was done, so no, but it's, it's, it, has, it has a charge still. As I was saying, this guy right here is the GPD Pocket. It was sent to me um, to do a review here on the channel, and I did it some, I think, two years ago almost now. And I think that this, this is a spoiler, actually, for the video. Pretend you didn't see that. This is the GPD Pocket. As you can see, it looks very much like a little MacBook Pro. If I were to slap a little Apple sticker here, on the top, this might actually confuse some people. This isn't the only tiny laptop I own. I think I just put it to sleep accidentally by closing the lid a little bit. So while this thing wakes back up, I hope, we have also here the Picago. We just gotta give the camera a while to decide if it wants to focus or not. Okay, here we go. Um, and so this is the Picago. It came out after the GPD Pocket, but they have very similar internals. All these little tiny laptops, just like the netbook of old, and we're gonna touch on that, have very similar internals. Usually a low powered processor, the Atom line by Intel was what powered most of these tiny laptops in the past. Usually around like eight gigs of RAM, a touch screen, I, this thing is definitely off. It's weird that it took me this long to realize it. And this one specifically, the Picago, has an advantage over the GPD Pocket in that it can be used as a traditional tablet because the hinge goes 180 degrees the other way like this. So this can be actually operated like a little Windows 10 tablet. So that's kind of cool. And it also has a webcam, which the Pocket Go for some reason doesn't have. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret about me. I'm a little OCD with clocks showing up in videos because that way you can tell how much I screwed up shooting these takes because you can see how long has passed between them. Anyway, so there you go. It's another little Windows 10 laptop. And this isn't all I got. I also have this little guy right here, which may just be the world's smallest laptop, I think. Now, don't quote me on that because I'm not entirely sure, but it is very small. Like if I, I'm gonna take something here that I can use as, as comparison. Like this is my phone right here, the ROG Phone 2. And it's like, it's bigger uh, lengthwise than the actual device. This is the GPD Win. Now, as you can see with this one, clearly, the big difference here is that it's it's more meant for gaming in that it has an actual controller baked right into the system here. It has shoulder buttons here on the back, two pairs of them right here, and an analog, and it just went crazy. Oh, that's Steam, I think. Uh, it has two analog sticks, face buttons, D-pad, and it's, yeah, it's a little Windows 10 laptop, again, a low powered, low spec computer that's very, very equivalent to these other guys I have right here. The difference being that this is more for like doing work, whereas this is obviously more uh, for actually playing games. Now, as I was saying, to understand the history of these devices, we have to go back in time, back to 2007, in fact, when Asus put out the Triple E PC. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. I've heard some people saying E E E PC. That just sounds weird. The Triple E PC was a tiny Linux-based laptop that was an offshoot of the One Laptop Per Child project, which, as the name implies, was a project that aimed to lower the cost of manufacturing a laptop down to $100 so they could be then donated to poor children in developing nations. Asus was basically a pioneer in that market, and when they put out the Triple E PC, a lot of other companies started to 
put their own spin on these devices. And they were called netbooks because they were very low powered machines. They were really geared towards browsing the web and you know checking your email that sort of stuff you weren't expected to do a lot of hardcore work on it because you know the small size and the screen the keyboard everything's kind of cramped but to check your email and go on social media which back then it was really just myspace and facebook you know they actually you know they worked for that like i mentioned though it was originally linux based there was a windows 7 version of the triple apc and a lot of other companies started putting out their own netbooks now you might be thinking that it seems silly to buy a whole ass laptop however small and affordable it was because they weren't that expensive just to browse Facebook and MySpace because, well, that's what your phone is for, right? Well, wrong. Remember, this is 2007. That's the same year that the iPhone came out. The smartphone market was really a niche market. Not everybody had smartphones back then. So you didn't have this culture of checking these things on the go the same way we have today. So a little portable computer to do these tasks and, you know, maybe doing some light little work because it is a Windows machine, so it's very capable far more capable than the dumb phones we had before smartphones became the norm. Just like the iPhone, the triple EPC ushered this generation of similar devices by competing companies all putting their own spin on the concept. Ultimately, netbooks were not long for this world. Once smartphones became the norm, the need for a small portable laptop to, you know, go online, check the weather in your email or whatever, that just wasn't there anymore. So netbooks kind of quietly faded away. Recently, as you can see by these devices here, the concept of a very portable laptop seems to be picking back up again. That seems odd because these guys right here, smartphones, at least in my opinion, that's what did the netbook in. So if you all now have these, why would you need a tiny laptop? And I mean, you probably already have a laptop anyway, right? Because again, and the important thing here is they're not very affordable. I mean, they really are a niche product that not a lot of people will have a use for, especially considering you probably already have a device that you might be using to watch this very video that covers most of those functions, except for one. And that's why I still love these things. Aside from the fact that I am a sucker for anything portable, these devices have windows, which means there's a whole bunch of games that you can't easily play on your cell phone. Now, obviously you can play DOS games on uh, a, a smartphone or a tablet just fine. In fact, I have done a video right here, click that thing on the top, where I cover and I show you how to install and configure and play these old DOS games on your phone or tablet or on your GPD XD, which was what I used for that video. But Windows games, they're not so easy to play on Android machines, on your phone. And you know, if you have an iPhone, forget about it. That's why I still love these things because the idea of something this small that I can use to play classic PC games and especially classic real-time strategy games. I'm a huge, huge real-time strategy game fanboy. And these are games that aren't so easily played portably, right? Like. Obviously, there are exceptions, and I've covered them here on the channel before. Some of my favorite 90s real-time strategy games were ported for the PlayStation back in the day, which means they can be natively emulated on a PSP, or you can play them on your, on your Android phone as well. But, of course, you're talking about a port. Now, the Warcraft 2 port uh, for the PlayStation, for instance, is a great port, but if you want to play actual Warcraft on the go easily on the most portable thing you can find, this is your guy. And obviously this little thing here, or in the case of the GPD Pocket, the more traditional little nub here, cause, cause this thing is interesting. This is kind of like a, this is not a, a, a conventional nub. It's like, it's more of like a sensor. It doesn't really move. It's like, I, I don't like this. I, I'm not, I'm really not a huge fan of this. Like I, and I'm not a huge fan of this either. Uh, for the record, it's just, this is a, I can see what's going on here. Like, I feel like I have more control over the movement of the cursor. This thing here, it's like a microscopic trackpad. I, I can do without that. But forget about that because you can pair a Bluetooth mouse. And I like this Mi mouse here because it, it's very Apple-like and I feel like it fits the aesthetic that the GPD Pocket is going for. So I can have this, um, well, I, I guess I have to turn it on, there you go. I can have this uh, paired to the GPD Pocket and this becomes a portable red alert machine, which I mean, I almost said is worth the price of admission, but these little guys, they aren't exactly affordable. So I, I don't feel comfortable saying that just because you can play portable Command and & Conquer, and I mean, I love me some Command & Conquer, I understand it's still such a niche use case for these things. And considering you probably already have a laptop anyway, 
there isn't much of a reason to buy this just to play these games. You can easily play this on any other laptop. But I'm such a sucker for portability. Like just just seeing this tiny little laptop running one of my favorite games growing up. If I could go back in time and tell little, uh, however old I was when this game came out, maybe 13 or 14, if I could tell little 14 year old Izzy that one day I would be playing uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert on a machine that I can, I mean, I was gonna say I can throw it in my pocket, maybe this is a little bit too big for a pocket, a coat pocket maybe, that I would be playing this game on something that I could throw in my pocket, that would have blown me away. Now, obviously, yes, it's not just games, you can also do a little bit of work, this is a Windows machine after all, but this little cramped keyboard, you know, it's not gonna be ideal. Like right here, I have Heroes of Might and Magic 3, one of my favorite games of all time, running flawlessly on a tiny little laptop. Like I love, like this, for some reason, like maybe call me crazy, but this, appeals to me more than playing this on my actual laptop for some reason. Tiny laptops are really a niche product that nobody truly needs, but I for one am so appreciative of the fact that they exist. But what about you? Did you ever own a tiny laptop? Maybe one of those netbooks? Okay, uh, I'm, I think I'm getting my ass kicked here in, in Red Alert. Yep, I sure am. What was I saying? Right, okay, back to... Back on track here. Maybe you owned one of those netbooks back in the late 2000s. Maybe you have one of these guys right here that I've reviewed here on the channel before. I mean, I know for a fact some of you guys bought these because, you know, the affiliate links and everything. Which, by the way, thank you so much. It really helps the channel out. So what do you think of tiny laptops? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, follow me on social media. I'm very active over there, both Twitter and Instagram. Especially Instagram. I post a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff. Maybe you're going to be into that. I don't know. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy, and I'm done.